Prior to meeting Ethan, I was at Towson University and I ended up transferring to Westchester in the fall of 2012. And I was kind of really looking to who I was as a person, what I wanted to do with my life, what I wanted to really major in. And so I decided to transfer to Westchester. When I did, I picked up health and physical education and an adapted physical education minor. And that's pretty much where it all started. <laughs> Uh, before I met Jill, I was going through college at Westchester University, um, health and physical education. Uh, I had a minor in adaptive physical education, uh, and I was about a sophomore when I met Jill. Ethan and I first met in the adapted PE program. We were in an adapted aquatics class, and he was the instructor, and I was one of the one-on-one -on -one coaches with a boy. His name was Austin, and he had autism. And he was like spinning in circles under the water, whistling, like making a whole ruckus. And this was like my second week when I was in the minor at the adapted PE. And he came over and was like, oh, hey, like you having trouble over here? You need some help? And I would say that's like the first time we really met. I was actually an instructor in the pool um, and one of the coaches was missing so she subbed in for that and that was the first time I laid my eyes on Jill. I think my first impression was like, oh he seems like a really nice guy, he's trying to help me with this kid who's totally not listening. And I was speechless, I was trying to go through my lesson and I was kind of taken aback. I'm like, oh, who's, who's this guy coming over and talking to me in the pool? And we're like both awkwardly, like I'm in a one-piece bathing suit and he comes over like, you know, trying to act all cool and stuff. She was great with kids. She was beautiful. Um, and I saw her in the water for the first time, so she had no makeup on or nothing. And I saw that side of her right away and I thought she was beautiful then. And just the way she reacted with the kids and the other coaches, she was just a very personable person as well. He came up to me and he seemed like he was really trying to help me with Austin because he was, you know, spinning in circles and I really didn't know what to do with myself. And I think I was excited for where it was, who this guy was, and it was my second week at Westchester. So I think I was just excited to meet somebody nice who was going to be helping me and I was also thinking like, who is this guy? And you know, what, what does he really want out of coming over here and helping me? <laughs> how we became involved with each other um, and leading up to our first date and how I asked her out. I, um, well we were friends for about two, two and a half years. We had tons of classes together. So we really started becoming good friends and we, pretty, we did a lot of stuff together, whether it was just going out in Westchester or hanging out with other friends in the adapted PE minor. Uh, we just really became good friends and we're always, we had class every, every semester together. And that winter semester of 2012, uh, we like sat next to each other, so we got to know each other a little bit more. And probably within the next like two and a half years, we, our friendship just kept building and eventually we both had like significant others, so it was kind of out of the question to even think about. We actually both were involved in past stuff, and um, one day we um, it was we we both moved on to one day, and uh, later down the road we were at Barnaby's with a bunch of our friends, and kind of we kind of made like eye connection, kind of like. You know, I've liked you for a long time, and I know you've liked me for a long time. I think I was, I was throwing some punches his way, like giving him hints that I wanted something more, but I think he was kind of confused because, you know, we weren't really sure if we wanted to go to that step or not. Like, we liked each other. We knew we liked each other. Um, and I was going to leave. I was, I had a, a good amount to drink that night, and I was like, hey guys, I got to go home. And Jill actually made the first move and was saying, ah, I'll go, I'll, I'll walk you home. <laughs> and um, we walked home, uh, we hung out on the couch, um, we hung out, just talked all night. And that was, that was the night where we kind of both realized that we both had feelings for each other. Um, and that was the, 
that was like the first night where we kind of went out with each other. <laughs> I would say that's pretty much like the first time we really officially just really hung out with each other and like, hey, we like each other more than just friends. <laughs> and ever since that night, we kind of just, I guess that would be consider us dating after that night. Um, and then we went on a couple of dates after that and it was official. I think our official first date would be one night, he's like, all right, you can come over, I'm going to make you dinner. And he decided, he made chicken, and it was delicious with some pasta and veggies. And it was at his little dirty apartment in Westchester um, with his roommate Kevin, and he made dinner. And it was delicious at the time, you know, we were just sitting there enjoying it. And then afterwards, we both like got a stomach ache. I guess the chicken was old. God knows who, how old that chicken was. So we ended up uh, getting a little bit of food poisoning from it. And uh, we were both like laying on the floor by the end of the night, just like trying to not throw up our dinner <laughs> that he had just made. Um, but that was our first date. And I figured if she stayed with me through that night, I figured she must really like me. Obviously it didn't scare me away. And he made something else another night that was delicious, so he redeemed himself. Well, the first kiss, um, I, it was um, that night that we went to, I came back from Barnaby's. So our first kiss was pretty unexpected, I think. Um, it's, it was like building up to it, and you know, I would casually like, if we were watching a movie or something, I'd just like put my leg closer to him or something, just trying to throw him hints, but he didn't quite get it. Yeah, I think I was a little slow on the physical part because I was so nervous about her and our friendship because I didn't want to pull a move on her and then her being like whoa <laughs> what, what are you doing and then there is our friendship so I was a little slow because I was she sent mixed feelings back to me so one night when we were out at Barnaby's he finally got like I think a little bit of liquid courage mixed in and we uh, we like just went back to his apartment and Kevin his roommate was there and I think it was just, it was pretty awesome. It was just finally, um, when we first kissed, we were sitting on his dirty college couch, you know, just casually sitting there. And I think it was just really nice. It was awesome. And it was a great first kiss. <laughs> it was actually the kiss the next day after that. It was actually a little more hard to do. But I, I muscled up and I did the kiss after that too as well. So my relationship with Ethan really started progressing after that and we really didn't like to be apart from each other. We were always having so much fun together and we had a lot of snow days that year so we always were having like tons of fun with friends and... I knew I loved her and I knew uh, after I would say that summer, that we, first summer that we spent together, I knew that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. Um, so that's after that first summer, which was probably six months into actually dating. Um, that was when I really knew that I wanted to marry Jill as and proposed to her, so. I went home actually and met like his parents up in, in Harrisburg and his, he has such an awesome family and he loved my family. So it just really seemed to all be falling into place. And I know, especially once my family met him and realized like how awesome he was and they were so excited for me I think that was like my, at least my final factor like this this is who I want to be with the rest of my life uh, the proposal this was this is a long process going through the buying the ring and I kept it a secret I didn't talk to Jill at all about proposing because I wanted it to be a complete secret when Ethan proposed, I really had no idea. We had like, you know, talked about it before, like definitely we wanted to be with each other. Um, but, you know, we never talked about when or when he would do it, where it would happen. Like we never really talked about that. Um, I didn't ask what kind of ring she wanted, how big. Um, and plus I didn't, I know she didn't care about how big or what kind of ring it was as long as I gave her one. Um, funny story about that, we were in Philadelphia. I was with my parents and we were ring shopping and she actually met us there that day right after we were shopping for rings and she was wondering what we were doing there for the day and we were oh we were just out to lunch um, and we actually purchased the ring an hour before I saw her um, so she had no clue and it was right and almost right in front of her face and then the next part was trying to keep it hidden 
from her. Uh, and we, I kept it hid for like, hidden for like two, three months. Um, through the holidays, through the new year, my cousin got married and my whole family was there and they all knew about it. And trying to keep them <laughs> from talking was tough too, um, especially with a couple of my aunts and uncles. After we graduated in December, we ended up going on like a two month road trip and we were so excited. We had just left, it was right um, after New Year's and we were up at his, co like his cousin's wedding and then we went like all through Michigan and all up through the northern states. I knew I was gonna do it at some point on the road trip. Where or when, I didn't know exactly. I just wanted to feel the time at what, like the right time. I had the ring in my jacket the whole time so I knew that if the moment was right, I was just gonna whip it out and do my speech and do it. Um, I was actually going to do it, propose to her in Michigan, in Ann Arbor, because um, I love Ann Arbor, and she fell in love with it too, and it was snowing, it was perfect, it looked beautiful out, uh, it was like the perfect setting, and right before I was going to do it, uh, I got food poisoning the night before, so I was stuck in bed and I couldn't propose, and I even tried to get her to go, I was like, let's just take a walk, and she's like, no, you're not going anywhere. I ended up going to urgent care. <laughs> So that got put on backfire. Uh, then we got in Chicago and it was negative 40 degree weather. So we were pretty cold and it was like the second day, well first really full day we were there and we walked around as much as we could, but it was still negative 40. So it was like you could be outside for 10 minutes and you had to go back in. And we ended up going in the top of the John Hancock building like earlier in the day and just got a drink and overlooked the city and it was really awesome and it was our first time in Chicago so we were having a lot of fun and I suspected nothing and so we went back and just kind of refreshed ourselves and came back out and to get dinner and stuff. So I was like hey let's go back up to the John Hancock building at sunset and just get an app and a beer or something and watch the you know sunset over the city I think it'd be really pretty. Uh, it was it was perfect we got the perfect seat we were in the corner you saw the whole city and as soon as that sunset hit, I was shaking. I, she got an appetizer, I couldn't even eat it because I was shaking. She was wondering what was wrong with me. And I was on the verge of, I was sweating. I was going to the bathroom and the sunset finally came down. And um, I was like, chill, let's take a picture of the sunset. And so I got my phone out. And he starts like taking a selfie and he stuck the ring like right in the middle of the picture. And I, just, I remember looking at it, I was like, is this really happening right now? Like it was, it was the most exciting thing. And he like got down on one knee in there and just he asked me to marry him. I don't even really remember exactly what he said. And I did my speech and I asked her if she wanted to marry me. And she said yes. But I just remember saying yes and, you know, giving him a big kiss and hug and everybody started noticing around us what was happening and um, a couple of people like bought us some champagne and a beer and it was just, it was so awesome and we went back afterwards to our friend's house we were staying and had a very nice dinner and celebrated with some champagne and spent the rest of Chicago very happy and excited. <laughs> Milestones in our relationship. Um, there's Maisie. That's our first really. That's our first thing together. Um, so she has a lot to do with our relationship. Our dog. I think that that really showed the commitment that we have together, and it was definitely a big step for us as we kind of had to figure out, you know, how we wanted to train her and all of that stuff. So I think that that was definitely a really huge part in. Our relationship and helped us kind of move on to the next level and looking forward to you know maybe getting another one or even kids in the future so I guess it leads into one thing leads into another. <laughs> another milestone is our, our road trip. Uh, our road trip is something that we have together that we can share for the rest of our lives that we bonded so much over that road trip if we got through 50 days stuck in a car together or stinking it up and we still loved each other after that, and we knew that we could get through a bunch. We got robbed in San Francisco. Um, we, we did it all on that road trip, and after that 50 days, we still, were, we still loved each other, and we still knew that this wedding is still gonna go on. So that was, we needed that um, 50 days to really solidify um, our relationship.
I think we really learned a lot about each other and really what our values were in life and how similar they were. And I think we just, we really learned a lot about each other when we were on the trip. The qualities I love about Jillian, um, she is so, she's such a caring person. She, she's so passionate too. She's passionate about everything she does, whether it's working at the restaurant um, at Uncle Bill's, whether it's working with the kids at health and physical education. What, no matter what it is, she is so passionate. She loves what she does. Um, and she does it with the meaning behind it. Um, and she does that with our relationship. Um, her passion, her love for people, um, just the way she cares. She cares about me, she cares about her family, she cares about a lot of people, and it shows. And she's a very, she's a tough woman, and I love that about her. So there are a lot of things I admire about Ethan, but I think some of the things that really stick out to me is that he's a very honest person, he's very gentle, he is, always has that romantic side to him, which I love. This obviously goes along with his good looks, too. And I would also say he's very humorous. He's a lot of fun. Um, he's very family-oriented. He always knows how to make me laugh, even when I'm not having the best of days. And he can always bring me up. Um, he's very supportive, very loving. I could, I could keep on going. <laughs> Jill really is my better half. She, when I stress out, she knows how to, um, she knows how to get the stress out of me. When I get all worked up, she, she finds that way to calm me down. Just by whether it's, <laughs> whether it's like scratching my back, which sounds childish, but it works. Uh, and she knows that. I don't even have to tell her that. She just knows which buttons to push. But, and when to push them and I'm a very I'm, I can be very stubborn um, it's one of my traits I'm just stubborn and she finds a way to win that and most of the time she should win that which is she's right most of the time and she finds a way to put down my stubbornness and make me see the big picture and I don't know how she does it because I've never had that before but I, 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 I kind of like it I'm getting used to it so Ethan definitely compliments me in a very good way and he really does bring out the best in me. It's like if I'm having a bad day he knows how to kind of make my mood better and be like hey this really isn't so bad like you're you're fine and he always just knows how to we know how to lift each other up and I think that's something that's really important because no matter what we have gone through we've have had you know a lot of ups and downs um, whether it was like family oriented or job related, we always really knew how to support each other and get each other through. Uh, hi, Joe. Um, our future together, however long it is, whether it's I live for five more minutes or if it were 50 years, I'm looking forward to going to sleep and waking up next to you every day for the rest of my life. Whether we have no kids or we have 10 kids, um, as long as I'm with you, and as long as I'm with you, we're going to be happy. I'm going to be happy. Um, and, <laughs> all right, hold on. Um, as long as we're together, it um, doesn't matter if we're poor, doesn't matter what we're doing in our life, doesn't matter if we're in a car, and that's all we have if we're in a car, because we know we can do that. We can do anything. So. Um, as long as you're by my side and as long as I'm by your side, I know we're going to be happy. Um, and that's what's so comforting about being with you, Jill. Um, so I love you and I'm looking forward to our lives together. So Ethan, I am looking forward to many adventures through the rest of our life. We are, seem to be very adventurous people and I'm looking forward to spending the rest of my life with you and starting a family with you and really moving on with our lives together. Um, I know that we will always be there for each other. I'm looking forward to maybe soon getting a house and you know, really starting our lives. Hopefully finding a job soon, like a steady job that we both like and enjoy. 
Um, I also think I'm just really looking forward to having you by my side and just always knowing that you're there and all the memories that we're going to have with our families, um, with our nieces and nephews, everybody. And I just want you to know that I love you so much and I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you. I love you. <laughs>